irritability. The philosophy of life, then, as far as this matter is concerned, must consist of two things. First, to keep ourselves out of irritable bodily states. And second, to understand and control these states, when we cannot ward them off. Of course, the first of these is the most important, and yet, of all things, it seems to be least looked into and understood. We find abundant rules for the government of the tongue and temper. It is a slough into which, John Bunyan hath it, cartloads of wholesome instructions have been thrown. But how to get and keep that healthy state of brain, stomach, and nerves, which takes away the temptation to ill-temper and anger, is a subject which moral and religious teachers seem scarcely to touch upon. We have a common saying, that this or that person is soon used up. Now, most nervous, irritable states of temper are the mere physical result of a used-up condition. The person has overspent his nervous energy. Like a man who should eat up on Monday the whole food which was to keep him for a week, and go growling and faint through the other days. Or the quantity of nervous force which was wanted to carry on the whole system in all its parts is seized on by some one monopolizing portion and used up to the loss and detriment of the rest. Little Foxes, Harriet Beecher Stowe.